Okay, intangible assets. What are intangible assets? Well, you've probably figured that out uh, pretty much from the, the book, but I'll hit a few things here. Uh, they're generally referred to as amorphous because you can't crash into them like you can a truck or a desk. Um, they have a, some different characteristics. If you want to compare a patent or a franchise to a desk or a truck, um, your intangible assets can be used by more than one person at once, and the more they're used, the more valuable they become. As opposed to a truck, where it can, you can only have one person sitting there driving it, and the more you use that truck, the more it wears out. So that's, that's one basic difference. Um, the other is that machinery and equipment and things like that can easily be replaced when they wear out. You just go buy another one. Where your intangible assets, a lot of times they've taken a lot of time to develop and um, they're not as easily replicated uh, if, yeah, if you need to do that. Okay, so you might think that intangibles, they're kind of like the invisible man or imaginary friends, things like that, and they're not too important. Um, that's really not the case. A lot of times, especially now, um, most of the value of a company is in the intangible assets. So if you look at a company like Microsoft, and um, you look at their assets, and these are billions here, um, and they're, less their liabilities. This is the net assets, the net worth of the company, and this is fairly recent. Um, and you compare that with what the uh, market values the company at. And the market capitalization, that would be the number of shares outstanding times the market price per share. That's how much people are willing to, how much people have paid for this company. About 10 times more than the value of the net assets shown on the balance sheet. So why is that? Um, the earning power of the company um, isn't really related to its buildings and its equipment and stuff. It's related to its highly skilled creative labor force, corporate culture, and other intangibles. Now, do we account for this? Not in this case, because um, unless the company gets sold, uh, this, this would be, uh, unless the company gets sold, uh, this difference is not going to be accounted for. The only time we account for what would be called goodwill is when one company buys another for more than the value of its net assets. But we'll see more on that later. Okay, um, so companies um, with intangible assets, if you want to think of it in a concrete term, you've got two companies uh, that have exactly the same product, you know, plant and equipment. Um, they make a similar item, but one has a disgruntled uh, you know, workforce that just hates their job and, you know, they just go through the motions. And the other one's got a highly skilled, motivated workforce. Who's going to have the more earnings power? Who's going to have the more net income? Um, and it's this intangible, the creative workforce, the highly motivated people, all of that that um, we're, we're talking about here. Okay, so how do we account for this? Um, in, in the notes, I go through a lot of FASB's thought process on this. Uh, you don't really need to know all that, but it does give you the perspective if you would like. Uh, they do make the basic distinction um, between purchased intangibles, if you buy a patent, if you buy a franchise, versus internally developed intangibles. Uh, they get accounted for differently. The purchased ones get accounted for similar to purchasing a truck. Uh, the internally developed, all the costs of development, all the research and development for a patent that you're doing internally gets expensed. Uh, the only costs that can get capitalized would be the direct costs of you know, legal fees, registration fees, stuff like that. Um, so they'll make that distinction between purchased and internally developed. The other one is between uh, intangibles with definite lives and indefinite lives. If they have definite lives, we're going to amortize. Uh, and that would apply to, you know, most of the intangibles except for the ones that have, you know, like goodwill and I think trade names uh, and trademarks uh, tend to be infinitely renewable. Okay, so the indefinite ones, uh, the intangibles with indefinite lives, we cannot amortize because you cannot divide by infinity. They have infinite lives, okay? You can't divide by that little thing, that little sign. Um, so. They, they make the distinction between purchased, internally developed, 
limited lives and indefinite lives. Okay, so that gives you um, the, you know, sort of the basics of um, what's in chapter 12. Uh, it's, um, and I think the next thing we'll look at is some of the issues that go with our intangible assets.